Hey guys, uh, Ryan here. I, I've got a day off and it's a little bit rainy and kind of gross out to go flying, so it's definitely a hangar day. Um, I just thought I'd take today to go through my survival kit and I try to do this every couple months and make sure everything is in good working order, uh, make sure nothing's been left out and uh, just make sure everything's charged up, ready to go. So uh, with the survival shakedown coming up in April here, uh, a lot of you have asked, what do I carry in my kit? Now, I I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to this stuff, so I go a little bit overboard, but uh, I carry two kits on the airplane. Uh, one is in a 75 liter backpack, and it comes in with two liters of water weighing just under 30 pounds. And I've also got a survival vest, so if I'm uh, flying anywhere outside of populated area, I'm definitely wearing that. Uh, it allows me to have the bare essentials with me, and uh, I think you'll see that I actually get quite a bit shoved into that uh, fishing vest. So. Without uh, further delay, I'm going to walk you through the basics of what I carry in my kit. Again, uh, this is probably a little bit overboard for most, but uh, just bear with me and uh, you decide what, what you like and, and what you'd like to incorporate in yours. Here we go. All right, so uh, this is the backpack. It's uh, just a hiking backpack that I got from Mountain Equipment Co-op. Uh, definitely try on a few. I uh, just wanted to make sure it had the right fit for me and uh, and then it fit all my gear. So within this backpack, we're gonna fit all this stuff and a little bit more. So that's the backpack and we'll start with shelter. So what do I carry? This is a, a bivy sack. And uh, basically what it is is a waterproof shelter and in it fits a sleeping bag. Uh, so basically you can pop this up, you can tie it off to whatever you might have to tie off, a tree, airplane, whatever it may be. Uh, slide a sleeping bag in it and you've got yourself a waterproof shelter. It's not the most roomy or comfortable thing to be in but uh, it basically is instant shelter without the need for any other work. Uh, to go along with that bivy sack I've also got this sill tarp and uh, this is uh, I believe it's 8 by 11 feet and it's pretty much a reusable waterproof tarp and uh, if I have time I'll go ahead and set that up over the bivy sack just to give a bit more shelter to keep the rest of my gear dry. Uh, this is a bit of a luxury item that's a, a thermo rest. Uh, you can get them a bunch smaller but they cost a bunch more money that way uh, and it's a self-inflating uh, ground pad. Now uh, it serves more than one function it's not just for comfort it also gives you a thermal barrier between you and the ground because the ground is gonna gonna suck all the heat out of you and there's no way that you're gonna heat the earth so uh, this de definitely does add to a bit of warmth. Um, in this stuff sack, and these stuff sacks are great because they compress a lot of stuff, uh, I've got spare dry clothes. So you can get waterproof stuff sacks, this one is not, but in it I've got a rain shell, I've got a toque, uh, I've got uh, winter snowboard pants, uh, spare dry wool socks, uh, uh, thermal underwear both the top and a bottom, so point being that uh, you should be dressed appropriately if you're going to go flying over any sort of terrain. But uh, if you find yourself in a situation, it's definitely nice to have a, a dry set of clothes to, to get into. Uh, again, this is probably a bonus item. These are just gaiters. I carry them with me just more for hiking and when we're running the exercises, so when I'm trucking through the mud just to try and keep my pants and boots a little bit drier. Uh, again, this is kind of a take it or leave it item. It's not a survival item, more of just a comfort item. Uh, right here, I've got bear spray. So. This bear spray, you can see it's actually in a Ziploc bag just to give myself a bit of protection if it were to go off in the airplane. Uh, in addition to that, it also lives in a piece of PVC pipe that has a lid on it and is taped shut just to give myself a bit of protection in case it were to uh, discharge in the airplane. Uh, moving on, uh, definitely want to have a vessel for boiling water. Uh, so I like this one. Uh, it has a handle so you're not going to burn your hands too much and then in it is also two, two mugs so you can uh, heat your water for your food or for uh, sterilizing water and then you've also got uh, a cup for you and a friend and again a lot of these things have more than one use but uh, that's the vessel for boiling water. I uh, moved down here this is just a, a bag of I carry just a spare white rag just for whatever purpose may come up some extra tent pegs and uh, lots of cordage. Uh, you can't really go wrong with cordage, so pretty much any spare room I have in my kit, I put a little bit of cordage. So they say you can go three days without water and three weeks without food, but uh, who are we kidding? If, if I get hungry, I'm not gonna function too well, so this stuff doesn't take up too much room. Uh, they're a bit pricey, about nine bucks a meal, but uh, 
Every time I've, I've cooked one of these guys up, it's definitely good for two meals or in a survival situation, maybe even three. Uh, they don't really take up any room and they don't weigh anything uh, and they come in all sorts of good, good flavors. And uh, to be honest, I actually look forward to eating these, these guys. They're a uh, real good meal and uh, again, don't take up too much room or weight. Uh, I'm also a bit of a snacker, so I've got lots of kind of energy bars and some jerky and stuff to just keep me busy and uh, some instant coffee. Again, a little bit overkill, but uh, I carry this stuff around for the exercises and it also just lives in the back of the airplane. Uh, comfort item here, got some hand warmers there, uh, a candle, just some glow sticks, a whistle, at least one whistle is definitely a must. Uh, right here uh, in this Ziploc bag, we've got some, uh, just some baby wipes because you gotta go do your business, you might as well be clean doing it. Uh, some flagging tape, so I use that for marking off sites in the exercises, but also in a survival situation, uh, if you had to move at all, it's really good for marking off your uh, position and it's high visibility in the forest and against the snow. In this little bag, you've got multiple ways of starting fire. So we've got some waterproof matches, uh, some fire starting blocks. We've got some uh, Vaseline soaked cotton. Uh, try to have at least three ways of starting fire. Uh, this bag is just uh, basic first aid essentials, uh, just to supplement what's in the airplane. <clears throat> and then in the separate bag, I keep some band-aids and just some Advil so I don't have to go rummaging through everything uh, if you get a little nick on your finger. Uh, it's a spare battery pack for my handheld uh, aviation radio and uh, it's a second-hand uh, GPS that I purchased. So this is one reason why I pull a kit apart every couple months. I just discovered that the batteries in that GPS were dead. So pop some new batteries in there and away we go. Uh, in the backpack, carry water. Uh, I try to change the water out once every two months, so this is some fresh water. I just put two liters in there. <clears throat> Each one of these meals will take about two and a half cups of water, so in addition to hydrating yourself, don't underestimate the need for water for stuff like cooking. Uh, there's a spare battery pack, so I just had that on the charger. That's all ready to go, so uh, it's good for a couple charges on your cell phone or whatever other USB items you may have, and you may need that for communication. Uh, these folding saws are, are great. They take up a lot less room than a hatchet. They're a lot lighter. They're a lot safer to use and just as effective. Uh, it's a butane canister with uh, a little stove. And again, this takes up no room and it just plops on top of there. And there you go, uh, boiling water for whatever you need. Uh, got a tick remover, the life straw. So you can, uh, this is reusable. Uh, it's good for a lot of water. and. You pretty much walk up to any lake or puddle or water source and drink right out of it and you've got safe water. Uh, a headlamp, I can't speak enough about how important a headlamp is. Uh, one of the simplest and most survive, uh, important survival tools is a signal mirror and if you ask any search and rescue person, they'll tell you how effective they are. Uh, Multi-tool, a couple spoons and uh, just a little tip from experience, if you're going to eat out of these bags, go buy a long spoon. Uh, a couple spare uh, disposable survival blankets and, and tarp, and an emergency just plastic poncho. Again, also if you got room, this uh, survival guide is a fantastic piece of literature. Gives you great tips for everything survival related, makes some great uh, time killing and reading if you've got it out there. And uh, some playing cards, it's just another little bonus item. So that's what goes in the big backpack. Now, in addition to the backpack, I carry a vest, and this vest is worn anytime we're outside of a populated area. If I'm going to go play and uh, it's just me on board and I want to save a little bit of weight, I will ditch the backpack sometimes as long as I'm wearing the vest. And the theory behind the vest being, if you need to get out of the airplane, oftentimes the only thing that's coming with you is what's on you. So uh, that's why I have this vest. And it's just a, a fishing vest from Army and Navy, and I'll walk you through all the stuff that I fit in this vest. And these are kind of the, the bare essential items that uh, give me a little bit of peace of mind. So first of all, we've got a big heavy duty contractor garbage bag. I've got a bandana, uh, a mosquito net, and another light duty garbage bag. This is vacuum sealed with a food vacuum sealer. This here, vacuum sealed right down, is a dry thermal top. Again, uh, it's nice to be warm and dry. Uh, just a one meal there of oatmeal and apple cinnamon. Again, can't go wrong with some baby wipes for when nature calls. Uh, got a little collapsible bowl here for 
carrying water or whatever else uh, you may need. Again, the important signal mirror. Got this little bowl, so obviously in a vest we're not going to fit a big cooking pot, but you want to have some way of, of boiling something. So I've just got this little kitchen bowl and it fits in the pocket and I stuff it full of, got a magnifying glass, some gauze, some spare batteries, a couple of little candies. And then that vacuum packs down there. And uh, at least if we had to, we could boil or sterilize small quantities of water. Uh, again, good investment, a spare headlamp, keep your hands free. And these things are super bright. Uh, another long spoon. Uh, I've got a razor knife. Uh, in here, just got a couple uh, basics, some Tylenol, some Advil, some uh, anti-diarrheal in case you got yourself in some trouble. Another glow stick. Uh, these are pen flares here. Again, vacuum sealed dry toque to keep your noggin warm. Some cordage, a lighter. Uh, I've got, again, very basic first aid kit uh, for dealing with scrapes, bruises, cuts. Uh, again, another little first aid bag in just a resealable Ziploc with just batteries. Or sorry, band-aids, some batteries, a little bit of fire starter, some sterile saline so you could uh, take care of little minor nicks without having to cut open your vacuum sealed first aid kit if need be. And then uh, back down to my comfort items. I got some tea, I got some instant coffee, again all vacuum sealed. Couple more tea bags. Uh, here's uh, one of those aluminum survival blankets, vacuum sealed. Uh, you can see I got into that. I must have got a bit hungry somewhere. But uh, comfort items: some oatmeal, a little bit of gum, a couple of granola bars, some uh, zip ties. These are awesome. A saw. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but it takes up no space and weighs nothing, so that goes in there. Uh, a knife. Uh, here again vacuum sealed, we've got some matches, we've got some water sterilization tablets, a little bit of fire starter, a little fishing kit in an old uh, Tylenol bottle, and a couple different uh, types of tapes. So we've got some duct tape, we've got some medical tape uh, rolled onto a spool. Some hand warmers, compass, and uh, usually carry my last expired EpiPen with me just because I've got a bit of a, a bee allergy. Attached to the vest, we've got a flashlight. Bear bell, or some people make fun of me and they just call it a dinner bell. Uh, flint and steel, again, tied to the vest. And then just on some of the hooks here, I've got some carabiners, because why not? So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a, a once over on the kit that I carry. And you may laugh at me here and say I'm going overboard, but uh, I like to say that I'm basically packed where if I, if I have to spend the night out, and it's not always a crash landing, sometimes you just might get stuck with the uh, weather or whatnot. Uh, having all this stuff gives me a little bit of peace of mind and uh, basically has it where I'm not in a survival situation. It just becomes an overnight, and uh, that allows me to make better decisions with the airplane, not push weather, uh, et cetera. So if you've got any questions, feel free to let us know. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. And uh, whatever you decide to carry in your kit, that's, that's up to you. It's a very personal decision, but uh, what I can't stress enough is that you get out there and uh, practice using the stuff and make sure that you're familiar with its use because uh, as Sean, uh, one of our survival instructors, says, you can have all the kit in the world, but uh, you could still die if you don't know how to use it. So anyway, have a great day, fly safe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.